All right, what's up everybody? So, a little bit of a follow-up to the Technique Cyborg video that I made uh, the other day. So, this is just a bit of a warning to the whole pendulum swing back and forth with Technique obsession and strictness versus just being a pro and kind of throwing some weight around. So, basically what I, what I see happening uh, actually a little bit already, but what I kind of predict to happen is an overcorrection. You see this all the time, not just in lifting, but very obviously in lifting. Also other things like, I don't know if you've heard of something called crypto. That tends to overcorrect quite a bit too. It's kind of similar to that where once something becomes a little bit of an issue and people start to kind of sell and they become a little bit bearish on something, you can apply that same concept to the super strict technique, just technique focus in general biomechanics and whatnot, it's kind of falling out of favor. And you just have to be careful not to go too far to the other direction. It's not to the point where technique doesn't matter and you can see people kind of becoming a little bit cynical and just kind of annoyed with this whole technique obsession in the, in the lifting industry and bodybuilding in particular. But you just have to watch out for making technique the thing that people kind of mock and make fun of and, and just write off entirely because technique isn't the issue it's taking technique to the extreme that's the issue technique is still the most important thing in the gym uh, it, it can't be just its own thing but it's it's congruent with other variables so when you have your technique in check you're priming that muscle to be able to move in a specific way with an appropriate weight and an appropriate rep range to your desired proximity to failure, and that's what's gonna grow you. So technique still does matter a lot. It's just the issue is pushing this super strict, super kind of lightweight type technique, which just isn't that effective. Um, you, you could argue why that's gaining a lot of traction. I think that's kind of besides the point, uh, but I would say, you have to use technique that challenges that muscle as much as possible. And it's such a simple concept, but I, w I don't want to see people kind of have an emotional response to this whole technique thing and just ditch technique entirely because we have something called instincts, very obvious, where your instinct, just as a person, is to preserve energy. In the gym, that you're kind of doing the opposite of that. It's not very instinctive to go into the gym and expend your energy, and not only expend energy, but push a specific muscle as much as you possibly can. Uh, it goes against the grain, it goes against your mindset, and that's why it takes some people a while to learn how to train hard. Of course, there's other factors in there too, but basically what I'm trying to say is if you're not paying attention to your technique at all, your body's gonna find the path of least resistance. It's gonna find the easiest way to move the weight. So while you might be able to use a little bit more weight, maybe more than you should, your body's still gonna find a way to make that easier than it should be. Unless you have a bit more of a seasoned mindset in the gym where you can kind of override and just overall be aware constantly of those instincts, you can't go to the extreme on the other side of the whole technique thing. You don't wanna to just toss weight around at the expense of technique because tossing weight around by nature, if you're moving the most weight possible, you're avoiding the tough parts of the lift, which are usually gonna be the most potent. And there's just, you just have to find the distinction between avoiding something that's challenging because it's stupid and useless, like pausing at the top of a row, uh, versus avoiding something that's challenging because it just lets you use more weight, uh, but you're missing out on a, on a potent part of that lift. So let's say uh, the, whole, the whole squat example, it, you could you could squat to above parallel and move more weight, and some people will say that's better, but if you're squatting below parallel, that's where most of the growth comes, especially just going through peak resistance at parallel, getting a nice stretch at the bottom. That's something where sacrificing some weight is going to be better for growth, and some people would disagree with that, but in my experience training myself and training other people, range of motion is going to be key, especially getting through peak resistance and just having peak resistance usually be at the longer lengths, which most of, ironically, most of the classic lifts do uh, have. They do have a length and bias. Uh, that's even the squat bench and deadlift, they're usually going to be length and biased. The way that they're promoted and the way that they're shown, especially in powerlifting, it's like you take these 
pretty solid lifts all around. You take these at least solid movement patterns and you avoid the hard parts to move more weight. That's not what you wanna to do to grow muscle. You wanna take the good lifts, but go through the most challenging part. So it's understanding when you should seek that challenge and when you should seek that difficulty, and when making something harder just for the sake of making it harder is actually a little bit redundant. Uh, like that row example where the guy paused at the top of a, a Smith machine row. Uh, you're you're going to be incredibly weak in that position, especially if it's a strict lift, uh, and that basically just cancels out the entire rest of the range of motion. So that's why you see so many jacked guys do cheat rows. A lot of these guys don't even understand the mechanics of it at all, uh, myself included previously, like years ago. Uh, but I would still do cheat rows because they just felt good. And that's where, when you're training with, uh, when you're training based on feel and you understand to kind of override your instincts, that can work really well. Uh, but if you're just pausing at the top of the road and make it more challenging and you don't understand why you're doing it, but you're just doing it because it feels harder or because someone else was doing it online, that's probably a waste of time. So I, I don't know. I guess I don't really have a whole ton of other points I want to talk about in this video. There's, there's so many different little avenues I could go down this, but I want to keep this video somewhat compact. So uh, see ya.